Mazda Talk, no Mazda. Things they talk about, they said uh, that the women would be the keepers of that pure spirit. And as a man in that relationship, it is my duty to go forth with that time of pregnancy and to start talking to that child in the same way that I would talk to another adult that I would not be changing my voice in any way so that when that child is born into our world, that that child would then know me by my voice. And as in during that time when the mother is also supposed to be singing those songs to her, and it would be up to the man to use that drum. as we say. And they got my wind for that mother to sing those songs in that sacred way. Uh, the state of being pregnant is such an overwhelming and powerful gift that women have been given by the Creator. And a lot of times, um, even though the pregnancies may not be planned, they're never unwanted. And um, I think with Healthy Start, they help to bring that back to the women, to the, even the teenage moms, you know, that this is a good thing, you know, we can deal with this. You're bringing a new life into this world, and that's a good thing. The name of our project is Majatag Minob Madzid, which in the Ojibwe language means the start of a healthy life. Healthy Start began in 1991 as congressional legislation. We started with 15 grants that were awarded around the country. And we've grown since then to have approximately 86 projects now. It's pretty exciting, but it's also challenging for me to coordinate and support the activities and services at our seven project sites. Uh, we currently have four in the Upper Peninsula and three in Lower Michigan. And of these sites, six currently serve rural communities and one serves an urban population for a total of 27 counties in Michigan being serviced by this Healthy Start project. We from the federal level are looking at the Intertribal Council Healthy Start project as a model program for uh, a Native American population. We want to know what interventions help to, help to improve the, the birth outcomes of Native American uh, women and their, and their infants. That way, we'll be able to take that information and transfer it to other Native American communities in the country. When we look at Michigan birth outcome data, what we find is that the infant mortality rate for Native Americans is about 14 deaths per thousand live births, which is two to three times higher than the rate for white infants. The rate of sudden infant death syndrome deaths, or SIDS deaths, is over four times greater in the Native American population than among white infants. If you look at infant mortality as a, as a measure of total societal well-being, it's not just a clinical condition. It doesn't result just from clinical issues. It results from a social context. Mm -hmm. And that, in that context, the American Indian quality of life in this land is not optimal. And so there has to be variations of behavior that come out of that experience that affects the will to live, the spirit of the people in this community, and how strong and supporting it is. They're under tremendous conflict. I was in the hospital for, I, I, it was about a day, a day and a half about I was in the hospital, and we, ha we didn't know what was going on. Um, you know, like doc, you know, the doctor, um, he never once showed up at the hospital. Um, I guess, I guess 
he was there, but he never he never once came in to talk to my husband and I ever. Um, we didn't we didn't even know he was there until after the fact. Like afterwards, I was so mad, you know. I don't know, like we, we put our faith in this doctor and he just, he didn't care at all, not one little bit. And so like this thing happened and you know, like we didn't have, have any answers at all. It, it was like, like we weren't allowed, you know, to ask anything. Anishinaabe Nene, Indian men have, have um, uh, a little difficulty in walking in both worlds. Um, we go to uh, professionals, doctors, health care, and oftentimes it's not always known what's going to happen. And that's it's somewhat what some of the brothers responded to. It's like they want to control things. It's by the clock. Well, we're not on overtime. No, we're on regular time. And let's just have things go in a regular way. Um, if I want to smoke down that birthing room, let me smoke it down. Um, if I want to be there with my wife, who I have a cultural responsibility to provide and protect for, then let me be there. Because when you shoo me out, you're denying me the right of being that man whom I stand for, that responsibility that's been handed down generation after generation. It's, it's um, bringing new life to a family. <laughs> And letting that family bond. That's what's important. This is the first time in my 25 years as Health and Human Services Director that I've seen resources to this degree provided for maternal child health services. Um, it has uh, allowed us to hire staff and to do outreach. Uh, get out in the community and identify pregnant women early on, um, provide incentives to them for um, c continuing their care in the health care system. And um, it's just a really great program. It follows the pregnant uh, mom through um, her pregnancy, labor, delivery, and uh, follow-up care up to two years after the birth of her child. I think the Healthy Start program is very valuable in that it targets the beginning of a family. So it's very important that they, the beginning teachings, um, they get the right kind of teachings, um, be it health, you know, or tradition, or nutrition, or any, you know, of those areas that are covered through the program, um, especially their health programs. Um, also teaching the responsibility of the mothers. Um, that they learn the right way to be a parent, the right way to um, take care of their families. You know, when the tribe came to us and approached us about this Healthy Start program, I was so excited because I had been working in the clinic and there was no prenatal education there at all when we came. And we were just in the works of, you know, doing some parenting classes, some prenatal classes. And when Healthy Start came up with this grant, it was like, oh, this is like, this is it. I don't know if it's a cultural thing, you know, to Native Americans, I think childbirth is such a natural thing that a lot of our moms didn't even go, didn't get prenatal care, or at least not till six and seven months. You know, it's like, oh dear, I have to find a doctor. I'm going to deliver, you know. And I think a lot of it's been the education. Yes, it's important. It's very important to get this early prenatal care. Um, this, is, this is the things that we test for. We educate them. And these are the things. This is what's important. If your blood pressure goes too high, that can be very dangerous. You know, if you, if you um, have sugar in your urine or if you have gestational diabetes, we, a lot of it's the education. But then again, a lot of it's the personal things. I find that my girls call me now when they have problems.
you know, I have a problem, my baby doesn't feel well, gee, uh, I really need a ride, I'd like to go to the, I need to go to the doctor. And I think it's really this personal attachment that you uh, form to the moms and the babies. Um, I think their overall health is better. They understand the dangers of alcohol and smoking during their pregnancy. Um, and it's brought a uh, support from all the women to belong. They, uh, they all talk and, and they know our services and I just think that overall they get better health care during their pregnancy and postpartum because we're there to advocate. You know, if they don't get a response from the doctor they like about something that's going on, they call us and say, you know, they're not listening. And so we'll do a home visit and go evaluate the problem. Then we call a doctor and we tend to get a better answer than what the, our clients get from their doctors. The Healthy Start nurse, she had a plethora of information, books upon books and videos. Anything I asked of her, if she, you know, she didn't have the answer, then she'd find it for me or help me find someone who knew the answers or, you know, call this person or type up this person on the web or anything. We follow our clients, you know, if they don't get to an appointment, we go track them down and get them there, the best to our ability. We have a real mobile population, and so we find that they travel from one place to another. And with having all the Healthy Start places to different tribes, we can call up another tribe and say, you know, one of our people is living up in your area. Can you find out what's going on? So we have a better tracking system of where some of our pregnant moms are landing. One of the very positive things that have come out of this is the requirement Healthy Start gave us to have a consortium. We had internal and external consortiums. Nowadays, we have one large statewide consortium. It includes agencies like the Michigan Council for Maternal Child Health, the March of Dimes, individual tribes, the Michigan Department of Community Health, many county and pri um, private maternal and child health agencies. We meet on a quarterly basis. We plan, we discuss, we dream of things that we need to provide better services to Michigan's Native American women and children and their families. One of the things that uh, we have really worked hard on with Healthy Start is to educate our community. And some of the things that uh, we have covered are um, breastfeeding, uh, depression in women, stress management, infant massage. Um, we've offered prenatal classes. We've done uh, sessions on HIV and sexually transmitted diseases, substance abuse. Uh, we've uh, done a professional conference for um, providers on fetal alcohol syndrome. And we also have had a peer educator group for a number of years that we've worked with. And we have had cultural teachings as well. The piece I like about the Healthy Start program the most is the home visiting. I think that the home visits are just a key. I don't think that you get a real good assessment of what's going on psychosocially with a client when you see them in an office setting. Having a Healthy Start nurse to work with uh, on uh, with many different families is a wonderful uh, opportunity to really provide quality care and to really uh, be able to make a difference in the lives of these families because the nurse uh, can reforce things that uh, I'm trying to uh, get across to the families. Uh, they can help me understand when my point isn't getting across or what ways different ways that might work uh, better with that family because she knows the family so well. So she can educate me as to the needs of the family that, uh, in ways that I would never pick up in the, in the short time that I see the family. And she can carry that message back. And so having her to work with uh, provides um, the family, I think, with an excellent resource and really improves the quality of care that we can provide that family. We all do things because we're motivated to do things. Um, very seldom is there action without something that motivates us. And for our moms, um, hopefully having a healthy baby and a healthy pregnancy will motivate them to make the necessary lifestyle changes that they have to make. But it never hurts to motivate in other ways. And so we offer incentive programs that will um, allow a mom to maybe get a little something extra I'd like to remind you to use your incentive program booklet. This is what you take with you to all your appointments and ask your providers to 
date it and sign it. Um, and then we can add up your points. You earn like 30 points for um, going to see the nutritionist or the physician for your prenatal appointments. And there's a lot of those toward the end. Remember that. And uh, we'll add up the points uh, toward the end of your pregnancy. And you'll be able to cash them in for some nice prizes that we keep in our supply store. Great. It is a time in a woman's life when you can motivate change because she has a reason now to maybe quit smoking or at least decrease her smoking, a reason um, besides herself to maybe give up drinking um, and um, to adapt to some healthy lifestyles. I like the, the health checks that they give. Every month they come, they, they weigh her, they measure her, um, they check to make sure that she's healthy all over. They check and make sure that I'm healthy still, you know, my blood pressure is not getting too high. Um, <laughs> they check and make sure that my blood sugars stay stable. Um, diabetes has never been an issue for me, but I also know that it's, it can come on real quick. My husband went 50 years without being a diabetic and then all of a sudden he was. Okay. I guess I enjoy the fact that they stay community oriented. That they, their activities aren't just for the mothers and the babies or the, just those parents. They involve the entire community. So, because their flyers say, if you're interested in, in having healthy babies in the community, come join this group. So they provide one-on-one -on -one visits to us, the mothers, but they provide community activities through the talking circle for everybody in the community, allowing that one aspect of community life, which is there isn't just one set of parents for our children, it's the entire community that's the parents for our children. Okay, today we made moccasins, <laughs> which is nice because she just turned a year and I'm excited for her to walk and dance and everything, so this will be part of getting her started dancing. And it's nice because we did it in a community way, so that's fun. At first I was unsure because I had her home birth and I try, you know, I still breastfeed and everything. and. It's hard to know like how people, how much people are into natural sort of things, but it was really good because that's like what we've been talking about a lot is natural childbirth and then like, you know, raising them in like a conscientious way that might be outside the mainstream. And so it's nice to feel like that's a, that other people think that's important too, you know, and that I don't have to be careful to feel like I'm going to offend someone just because I might think differently, but it feels real welcome. It's good. Well, I think the biggest thing that I love the most is being able to touch people. Um, not just on a professional level, but a personal level as well. Um, being able to feel what they're feeling and letting them know that I really care and understand. And that um, I'm not just there for a job. It's not just a job. It's something that I would like to do to help them. I like being able to advocate for my girls because nobody did it for me. And I am so proud to be able to do that for them. I go right to the doctor's offices with them. I'll argue with the receptionist if I have to to get her an appointment immediately or the next day or the next month, you know. If it accommodates the day that works best for her, I'm going to make sure she gets it, darn it. I really think Healthy Start works, yeah. I, I believe it, you know. It's where I know that my moms, we're not getting any prenatal care a lot of times they are getting prenatal care now and they're learning things. Um, what I think Healthy Start brings to the Native communities that's been missing is a more structured support system. Um, you have your family support systems but sometimes due to other factors, alcohol abuse, you know, substance abuse, domestic violence, those get altered um, and I think Healthy Start with the nurses and the outreach worker brings a more structured arena to bring these community members, the women, the children into so that you know we have the community ties being built back up. We have education, we have the traditional teachings. This represents the womb of our mother and as our, uh, as our people today go back into this sweat lodge they are sweating for the purpose of removing all of those things that are bad, those toxic, toxic uh, chemicals that are introduced to us through that food. And when we go back into that lodge, 
uh, we are taken back to that time when we were inside of the womb of our mother. And in that time we heard certain sounds. We heard the sound of that drum beat. That drum beat represents the heartbeat of our mother. And as that water is being poured, that represents that same water that we heard when we were in the womb of our mother. But when those songs are sung, those are reminders that when we were born, or in the womb of our mother, we heard our own mother uh, singing and humming those tunes to us. And then we heard the other sounds. And those sounds were our elders speaking our language. And that's how that language was handed down from one generation to the next. So when we enter into this sweat lodge and all of these things take place, they say when we come out of there, we're supposed to leave all of our old feelings in there so that we are reborn and come out of that lodge feeling refreshed and ready to start over again. Just as a newborn baby enters into this world, then so it is with we as adults. When we come out, we come out that same way. If you can empower them to take care of themselves and to take care of and to do what is necessary to take care of their children, you're going to see that cycle of health spiral upward and upward, and we'll see a reversal of the negative trends uh, that we have seen in the past. When we conducted the focus groups, we heard clearly from people that there was a strong desire for models of care which address their comprehensive needs and family concerns, and also provided personal attention. For example, the kind of care that midwives provide, or community-based public health models of care, and also care which incorporates traditional Native American healing practices. People know what kind of care they want and need. We just have to provide it to them. The doctor this time was, was great. And then the Healthy Start nurse, is she's always available when I need her. She comes to my work, my, my home. I can go to her office. She's always available for me. And that's, that's really helped a lot. The men in the talking circle related that their interaction with the Healthy Start nurses was warm and very helpful and made that whole process um, much easier for them. And miigwech to those people for being there for them. This is a wonderful project. In my opinion, it's one of the best projects that, that Healthy Start at the national level uh, funds. The staff are extremely dedicated they work hard, they're very professional, they're very knowledgeable, and you can tell that they really care about what they do and, and who they're serving. Um, and the, the results that come out of this project of, of improving the birth outcomes of Native American women is outstanding. I think the most personally gratifying change I've seen come out of the Healthy Start program is that not only are children spoken of as an important part of our society, they are seen as the most important link to our future. We have brand new, beautiful babies, all the way from pretty new to walking or almost walking. We honor all our babies with awards. They all get a certificate. We have a feast with this celebration to welcome them all and to show them all our appreciation of them. We have a photo table where the photos are taken. Every baby has a gift. Some of our babies are really excited about being here. <laughs> They're of course all, all beautiful. One of the things that we care about for the whole population around infant mortality is getting the messages to elected officials so they can, they can make informed choices. The exciting thing about the Intertribal Council is this voice is often not heard. And to the extent that it can become articulate in expressing those changes that are needed, whether it's Medicaid sensitivity, whether it's the health care structuring, whether it's the training and education of health professionals, to the extent that its voice gets added to that chorus, the chorus becomes louder. 
and the, and the unique experience of the Indian community will reinforce the messages coming from Arabs, coming from Afro-Americans, coming from Hispanics, because that chorus will be singing basically the same song. Okay? We matter. We belong, and your system isn't paying attention to us in this context or that context or the other context. I know the importance of programs like this. And that's why, as a legislator, I've fought so hard for funding for this program and others like it. I've seen firsthand the tragedies that occur when expectant mothers don't get the prenatal care that they need. And frankly, as a mother of two healthy children, I know that every mother wants a healthy child. The reason that Congress is supportive of, this, of the Healthy Start project is because it works. It, this Healthy Start model works in improving the birth outcomes to women and their infants. She was born at 24 and a half weeks, uh, one pound, 10.3 ounces. Her lowest weight was one pound, three ounces, which is about that big. She was less than 11 inches, She's smaller than a ruler. <laughs> the day I came home, they met me at the house. She came out the first day, the second day, and then it was the weekend, and then they came the first thing Monday morning, and they came three times a week for the first, I want to say two months she was home, because she came home on heart monitors, um, breathing monitors, oxygen for apnea, the whole nine yards. She had about 50 different wires on her, and, and I didn't get much sleep, so Mary and Kathy were... Uh, well, the nurses were um, really lifesavers for me. <sighs> Healthy Start to me, and I can honestly say this, it's an extended family. It's, um, oh God, I'm going to cry. They got, um, they really, I think without them, a lot of times I would have been lost. And I'm glad that our tribe thought of, to bring the Healthy Start to our program. And now my nurses, they're Tabitha's mom, Tabitha's aunt. One of them's already invited herself to the wedding. <laughs> and Healthy Start to me is, is an extended family. It's love. It's, 